Hey, this is Jim Graham from the Masculine Journey Podcast, where we explore relationship instead of religion every week. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it, share it, but most of all, thank you for listening and for choosing the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. A bunch of random LinkedIn messages, a bunch of awesome Christian brothers in Christ who make movies to change the world. They've been in business. They have amazing stories. A bunch of phone calls, a bunch of text, and suddenly these Connecticut Yankees find themselves in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, in a coffee shop. <laughs> so who exactly are Nick and Kevin? Because, guys, this is surreal. We're going to just have our meeting right here, and the listeners are going to... You want to go first, Kevin? I Sure. Oh, man. This is an incredible opportunity. Uh, uh, to be with you, Stu and John, this is uh, we appreciate this time, and we just give uh, give glory all to, to Jesus for this. My uh, my name's Kevin O'Brien, and uh, Helm from Westchester, New York, and my brother Nick Agneto over here, a brother from another mother. Uh, we are in the uh, mission field of going into our culture of media and entertainment to reclaim it for the Lord. There is such an urgent, urgent calling right now because of the content that is being pushed out there on video and streaming and and cell phones that are just feeding into the younger generation like a fire hose to the face constant uh, um just pounding of that of of a different agenda and and out there and that is indoctrinating and and really destroying i think the next generation of youth and we're called to to tra- to bring transformational messages through film and media and so we have a production company along with my wife first fruits entertainment and we uh we have uh, a slate of incredible content mm-hmm. and um that's just well, before we get into more of that let me let me share a little have nick share a little about himself Hey, what's up? Nick Agneto. And so I was thinking about this. He said, uh, you know, we're, we're taking back the mountains of media and entertainment. And I think about the Roman soldiers that used to put on those, those boots. And I don't know if you know, but those boots had giant spikes on the mm. bottom of those boots. Mm. And when they used to step into the ground, it would plant them and lock them in place. And I think about what we're supposed to do, and that's trample the head of the devil, right? Like he's under our feet, right? So when I think about that, I I think about how we're going to um, pull the young people, the youth, not just teenagers, I'm talking about young people. If if an an eight and nine-year-old child can have access on any type of technology or media platform to filth, how do we go in then and turn that so that they'd be interested in what we're doing. I'm not talking about, you know, the, the flower on the shirt, Jesus loves you t-shirt. I'm talking about some really rough, rugged, real conversations in shows, television, film, whatever it is, whatever the platform is that we're using, we have to have these real conversations. Mm. Understand? So uh, my background, just a little bit, um, was not churched, uh, was raised in Catholic church. Thank God I was born into a family that had somewhat of uh, an understanding of Jesus Christ. And I walked away. And I started my own journey, started looking for things and wanted to know what was out there. I had a lot of questions. I felt like Jesus could be the answer, but wasn't really sure. Um, I got into a bunch of... Uh, I got into drugs, Uh, I was having a lot of sex, and um, my mother and my grandmother and some of the women in the family were praying for me. Mm. And long story short, uh, fast forward to February 24th, 1996, um, I went to a club in New York City, and I left that club at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning on February 25th, 1996. And I left the club, went back to Connecticut. I was in New York. I went back to Connecticut. I was probably on seven or eight different drugs. And I thought for 
some odd reason, I needed to go to my parents' church. Now, I thought that they were, you know, I didn't know what they were into, but they were going to a church that was not a Catholic church. It was a Christian church. And at the time, because I wanted to be sober, I was practicing Japanese Buddhism. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was in all different directions. So I, I called my parents. I said, where are you going to be? They told me, and I showed up. And that day, there was a guest preacher. It was not the normal pastor of the church that was preaching. And this man had an anointing on his life. I don't know if you know, like a breaker's anointing, uh, an anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. And I mean, any anointing when we're preaching Jesus should break the yokes of bondage and slavery. But this man, when he spoke, those things fell right off of me. He came up to me at the end of the service, laid his hand on my head, I was out like a light, not a courtesy fall. <laughs> and, and I opened my eyes and I was looking at the drop ceiling and my mother looked down at me and she said, you've been out for 10 minutes. Wow. And I, I looked at her and I said, I'm not high anymore. I don't even want it anymore. This is a long story made short. Yeah, amen. And I got up and my father hugged me and he said, he whispered in my ear, I remember this so clear, it's all over. And we went back to my apartment and we destroyed everything that remotely resembled my life. And that year, after I had told the Lord and I knew what had happened to me, I said, God, I am yours. Whatever you want to do with me, use me. I will say what you want. Go where you want. Doesn't matter. I'm yours. And I left my life behind and I went forward in the Lord. I went to a Newark, New Jersey and I cleaned a crack house with a team of people to get ready for a family to move into. And I said, wow, I love this. Like, this is what I want to do. <laughs> wow. And I went on my first missions trip, and I went to the Dominican Republic, and I started doing missionary work um, in different countries and in the United States. And I had been working in film for roughly a decade. I was working for Martha Stewart and MTV and HBO and uh, different commercial houses and, uh, you know, started as a production assistant and moved up from there. And uh, I knew that I needed to leave that life behind. And then we come to this place, this junction where we are now. And so across the table at this coffee shop, that's why there's some cool ambient noise. Baller Nation, what do you think of these guys? Is this not crazy to meet these two brothers in Christ? They love Jesus. They're trying to change the world through all kinds of media and stuff. What do you say, uh, Baller Nation, a.k.a. John Perry, Truth Warrior Intern? Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing to know that there's people on the front lines that are, that are fighting for our young people who, who do get uh, bombarded by all this trash on social media and things. And as I coach a college team, I, I see the the impact that that our society of, of all these movies and, and, and video games and all this stuff that can have. And so it's nice to know that there there's a, a production company that's saying, hey, we, we want to change that. We want to we want to bring the Lord and, and redeem that industry. It's so encouraging. Yeah, and so, Kevin, you guys, you and Nick are partnered up together to change the world and to, to use me to talk about how that's happening and talk about a little bit about what God's doing now and how our listeners can get involved to learn, learn more. I mean, y'all are sending me these these screeners and these cool links to movies that are the real deal. And I, I need to watch them more, but tell everyone about that real quick. Absolutely. So we, uh, as I, as I was just sharing earlier, um, and, and to give a little backstory to how this came about to where we are now, um, I, I was in, in a life of living for myself, seeking a career, even though I had been given a word from the Lord years ago that this this industry was what I was supposed to pursue for Him, um, and he, he and He had revealed that word, and He had and He had made good on that word by um, fulfilling it by bringing me into a relationship with my wife. Um, but again, we get into our own mindset and thinking, living for ourselves, and thinking we're going to do it on our own strength. And so I had stepped away from pursuing this, and a couple of years ago, uh, I was really not in a good place. And uh, my brother Nick here, uh, we, we came, the Lord brought us together in church and we started praying and really edifying one another as, as brothers, lifting each other up. We had a couple other brothers from our church in there and that really helped us get realigned with the Lord, quiet down ourselves so that we could hear and discern his will for our lives. 
and we stepped out in faith again on that word he had given me that this is what we were supposed to pursue. So I left my full-time job. I stepped away from the 401k and the health insurance, even though I'm married with two kids. Um, it, it, it's a similar faith walk that Nick, Nick has been on. And, uh, but we, we, were, we were standing on the word from the Lord, and he has been downloading these scripts to us. These are unique, transformative, out-of-the-box scripts. It's not your typical, uh, as we said, flower on the shirt, uh, Christian faith in the, in the bo- faith box, here let us pray movies. These are, these are everything from a, a, a romantic comedy to a future to a political sci-fi type movie, but they're real stories. And our, our mission and belief is that if we're telling a real story that's authentic and, and has truth in it, then it's for all audiences. It's not, it doesn't fall into just a sector of what we kind of label the, the faith base. This is real stories. And so to answer your question, Stu, of, of, of what we're doing now with it, so we have, while we have several projects in development, we have one project that is, that's on the forefront right now, and it's called Blue Jacket. And what's, what's, what's interesting about Blue Jacket, when we prayed about and looked at across our slate of projects, Blue Jacket is about as John just reset, about the youth, the young adults, the high school and the college age students. It's about their choices and the consequences of those choices. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little more about the premise and the concept. But when we looked at this story, we said, this is something that the body of Christ will get behind. You know, there's, there's funny math in Hollywood. There's funny math with how the dollars get recirculated back to content creators like ourselves. And they, they'll, they'll let, they'll let the, the, they'll keep all the, all the purse strings tied so that all the content creators are dog eat dog and fighting over one another. But on this side of the, of the coin, our content is important to us because it's the message. And so we said, let's let the body vote with their dollar on what content they want to get out there. So what we've done now with Blue Jacket is we've put it out on an equity crowdfunding campaign. If you're familiar with the show The Chosen, this is something that they they did and helped them helped them really elevate and propel up because it it reveals that there's the the body out there of audience that either believers or just the hearts that are yearning for good quality truth content. And so that's what we've done with Blue Jacket. So Blue Jacket drops you into a single day in the life of two high schoolers. And with each choice that the two make, different color jacketed versions of them split off. And we follow the alternate versions in real time as they crisscross and even ghost one another so that you see the consequences of those choices play out and and impact the lives of those around them. Well, ultimately, all paths converge at a house party at the end of the day, and the two find themselves in completely different positions based on the choices they've made. So when we're talking about real things, like Nick just said, sex, drug, alcohol abuse, cyberbullying, date raping, suicidal tendencies. I mean, these are issues that the enemy is not holding back and the enemy is not coming at with kid gloves on towards our youth. And so if for us to reach the youth today, we've got to get in there and have these real conversations. And that's exactly what Blue Jacket seeks to do. So Blue Jacket is out there on Start Engine and and an equity crowdfunding. You might be familiar with crowdfunding with, with regards to like a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter, but those are donations. On a on a on a crowd equity crowdfunding, you're actually investing, and you're a part owner in this, and you stand to also participate in any potential profits. So not only are you putting your money into a message that you are behind and you believe in, but you also have a stake in it, mm-hmm. and you're saying I'm I'm in this to be a part of this on on. Uh, so we're really excited and we're, we're getting the word out now about this project through that because we believe who isn't going to be concerned with getting message to our youth and who isn't going to want to be a part of this project. And so we're wanting to get this out to the body of believers so that they hear about this opportunity. I love it. And I love sitting next to a guy here who the chains were broken by yeah, Christ, on, who was set free. And as you hear your partner, <clears throat> as you hear Kevin talk about how God's using and moving this thing, really a grassroots thing, a wake-up call. There's so much evil and there's so much bombarding. You know, maybe it was MLK or someone said, hey, we can curse the darkness. 
or we can shine a light. Shine a light. And be a light. That's it. And so as we get out of here, I would love, uh, Nick, for you to challenge everyone out there on what they can do. Uh, give a website. Give some kind of connection point so they can find you all. And they can write a check. They can invest. They can partner, whatever. And then, But also say something to everyone about, about where they are. There's a lot of folks that are struggling, and they're trying to find meaning, and they know God's... Uh, maybe they're not saved, or maybe they're saved and they're trying to find out, God, what do you want me to do to make a difference? The the evil is so great. How can people shine a light themselves? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Uh, listen, it's very important, and I believe this this will ring true to everybody listening. Whether you know the Lord, whether you don't know the Lord, whether you're on the fence about wanting to know the Lord, or I'll tell you this. There is a love that is so pure, that is so true. Jesus said to Pontius Pilate when he said, why did you come? He told him, Jesus told him, I came to bear witness to the truth. It's something that we're all looking for. It's something that everyone deep down inside, I don't care if it's two o'clock in the afternoon and you're on the squash court or if it's three o'clock in the morning and you're in your bedroom and you're your tears are flowing from your eyes. There is a truth that you're looking for. And the truth is this, that Jesus Christ came, died for your sins and has set you free. He set me free. Listen, I wasn't looking for him. I was sort of, but I wasn't. I wasn't really sure. I didn't know. Like I said, I was at a club the night before. I was practicing Japanese Buddhism. But he met me face to face. And when I met him, and I could talk until I'm blue in the face, and you might want to throw me out the door. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is God comes in and changes a man's heart. God comes in and changes a woman's heart, changes a person's heart. Right. Teenager, child, it doesn't matter. He's the one that does it. If you are looking, if you're not looking, be available and be open when he is prompting you because he will be prompting you even right now under the sound of my voice. Just be ready for what God is doing in your life. There's been times when you've had people put in your path to tell you the same thing you're hearing out of my mouth right now. Don't turn a blind eye. Don't have a deaf ear. It's important. This is truth. This is life. He is the way. Hear my voice. Allow Jesus to touch your heart. He's a gentleman. He will not bash the door down. He is absolutely knocking. There's no doubt about it. I know. I've been there. I've been right where you are. And I thank God that he's doing this work in your life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Guys, you have met Nick and Kevin. You can meet them more and get involved in their Amazing movie project, Blue Jacket movie. Go to startengine.com forward slash offering forward slash blue dash jacket dash movie. And you can learn all about it. And you can meet them on LinkedIn and Instagram, Facebook, wherever, wherever uh, godly people are wherever blue jacket is. shining the light of Jesus. Right. <laughs> blue Jacket movie. Thank you guys for sharing. Thanks for, for visiting us here in North Carolina, being on Truth Talk. We'll make this a podcast for you guys to share. You can throw it up at your site, whatever, so people can get to know you there too. And you can send it ahead of time. You're going to go speak somewhere. Hey, listen to this first, and maybe you won't disinvite us or whatever. Right. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but, that, but that's what, you know, thank God that he came on a mission strip, on a rescue mission to us, right, to set us free. And now we're about reaching out. Now we're on a rescue mission with him to share the good news of others, and you all are doing it, and I Praise the Lord for you. Thanks so much. Thanks, brother. God bless you. you John. This is the Truth Network.